everyone says don't zone or zoning bad, but when would you be like, actually we do need to zone? So let's say there's a bird's eye view of a house. Yeah. That's one zone and that's two zones, definitely. You're never gonna have, because they're not connect, the interconnecting area is very small. Yeah. That shape house, you're, it's all interconnected. So if you've got different wings like this, or if this is a hundred years old and that's one years old. Yeah, yeah, okay. So it depends on insulation and shape of building. Yeah. And also use, because if um, you have a building that's slightly an obscure shape, I don't know what sort of shape that is, but, uh, and you use it was that. old barn with a fat roof. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> built with a, by a blind man. Uh, and you use this room as an office five days a week, and the other two days a week, you have a whole family here. In fact, I wouldn't even zone that, I'd just have its own heat source in here. Yeah. I wouldn't zone that, because you're, then you're gonna have to have a huge heat pump or bo boiler to heat this whole thing, and then when you're turning off or down that whole thing, for here, you're either having a, a, high, a high flow temperature for this tiny little rad you've got in here, yeah. uh, meaning you're running that whole system at a high flow temperature, or you've zoned it completely and shut that off without mixers. It's going through there and it's just gonna cycle, 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 and it's just gonna lead to, to breakage. So I just put either a little electric heater or air to air or whatever in that one system. So I wouldn't even zone in that. I'd zone, but with different heat sources in that scenario. It's kind of an exaggerated scenario. So there's not very many places I would zone. Maybe upstairs and downstairs? Upstairs and downstairs. Every uh, upstairs. Most boilers, most new builds have our upstairs, downstairs zone system. Yeah, I wouldn't so. typically do that either. Cause, right, I'll tell you what I find comfortable is 20, between 20 and 22 downstairs, somewhere in there. Yeah. And 18 upstairs. Cause when I'm in bed, I like it cool. Uh, if it goes below, uh, people get confused between what their uh, thermostat's set to and what actually is that yeah, temperature. Yeah. So they set it to 18, uh, 16 and go, oh, I'm comfortable at night 16. No, you're not. You're comfortable at night 19. The house hasn't dropped that much in temperature. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's actually probably a comfortable temperature though because I do monitor that sort of stuff. So, But what you could do here is, for one, when you do a system design, you size your radiators for 18 at the same flow temperature for these radiators at 20 to 21. If you design for backup, and you design these for 21 degrees. When you come to commission, all you do is balance these down with a wider DT, balance down with a wider DT, as we mentioned earlier on, to drop the room temperature to 18. That'll push more flow into these radiators. So the radiators in, in here will become a hotter, a higher mean temperature. If they become a higher mean temperature, we get to drop the curve down on the heat pump and we increase COP. So we're, we're reducing demand and the way we reflect the demand reduce is by dropping the flow temperature on the cop, so it has to put in uh, less energy, but then when it puts in less energy, it's cop increases. So I've got, win, win, win. I got a feeling in a lot of people's zone though, because what they think is, we've got to put a circuit in for upstairs and a circuit in for downstairs. When it gets back to the plant room or wherever it needs to go, yeah. they go, oh, I need to put a zone valve on there, because it's two different circuits, but realistically, you could just put it in a, into a distribution pipeline and do the whole thing as one circuit. Yeah, or uh, you could do it with balancing, or you can do it with two RVs, or, yeah. Yeah, I mean like with zoning, like everyone thinks, well, what, well upstairs is one circuit, downstairs is another circuit, because I've got so many kilowatts got to go through yeah, these yeah. 22 more pipes, and I've got so much kilowatts to go through this one. Yeah. When it goes back to the plant room, they just yeah. assume that they have to put a zone valve on it, but really, they just need to go into a 28 mil pipe and, and distribute. They could just put a globe heat. valve on it uh, and just balance it. A zone valve is kind of a good backup, just in case there's some weird, I don't know, there might be a technology in the future that makes heat pumps really good when they cycle or something. I don't know, yeah. probably not. But if you do put in a zone valve, probably put a normal open one in because it should always be open. open. And then just balance it down with a lock shield or a globe valve so you just get, the, I do kind of like the idea of zoning off with pipes if, uh, and all coming back to one central manifold. The, the reason being, it's A, it's much easier to balance between floors and zones. Uh, so it self balances a lot better uh, and you can isolate parts more simply and stuff like that. So I do kind of and, like and that. And you get, you'll be able to distribute the amount, the appropriate amount down that pipe with, yeah. and keep the velocity low. Yeah, Whereas exactly. Whereas if you was trying yeah. to do the whole system in, one yeah. circuit, then your velocity is Yeah, you are much higher to achieve low velocities, keep a narrow DT and keep a heat pump happier. Definitely. Yeah.
We are so excited to be facilitating exclusive training for the next generation of heating masters. The Heat Geek courses are designed to take you from heating installer to heating god with the ability to design hydronic systems from scratch, massively increasing your value as a heating engineer and earn yourself a recognized certification. Let us teach you the skills you need to charge more for your services and future-proof your career.